Hey guys, welcome back to the day three and I think this video is going to be um, um, because I want to talk about more stuff of the goth subculture. This video, if you already saw the title, is What is Gothic Literature? Which um, I haven't really fully like touched up on and of course I don't want the video to be too long but I'll pretty much touch up on what it is and break down like um like some of the authors that you may know um and their stories that are widely known if I included a lot of them this video would be like probably an hour long because my passion and the gossip culture besides the music and besides the fashion is gothic literature and has like gothic architecture um so yeah let's get into the video <laughs> okay so gothic literature is largely known as a subgenre of gothic horror which of course is a lot of goth literature but there's also like romanticism in it but yeah it's a subgenre of gothic horror and a genre and mode of literature and film because some of these gothic literatures have uh, come into like being films and movies or um, stage plays or TV shows um, and it like I said combines horror, horror, death, and at times romance um like dracula has romance and um there's other genres that have romance as well um but we will get into that as we proceed with the video so the origin of gothic literature is attributed to the english author horace Horace Warpole, if I said it right. Warpole? Yeah. Um, with his novel, The Castle of uh, Toronto, which is a gothic uh, story. Now, the story of The Castle of, of sorry, a Toronto has merged from medi medievalism uh, I can't say with A, sorry. Middle. <laughs> That's what happens when you've had a long day. Third day at work, tired. Staring at a computer screen all day. But yeah, medievalism. Which I like medieval stuff. And like middle medieval renaissance, um, Victorian. I like a lot of that kind of stuff. And, um, um, yeah, me, medieval, ugh, see, I can't even say it again, you, what I said, and terror, and a style that has been endured, or endured ever since, so, that one is, sorry, is a popular novel as well, and, um, the really popular ones that I know, especially that I found out before the other ones was Dracula, of course, and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, um, Edgar Allan Poe. Oh. So yeah, let's get into the video even more. Sorry, I'm like off track. I've said this before. I am usually all over the place. I try to keep on one subject and not kind of go off to something else but that's just how I am I really can't help that um don't know if that had to do with uh, stuff from when I was little I was diagnosed with like ADHD or something like that I was very uh I wouldn't say wild as a kid but uh hyper something I don't know but anyway <laughs> Yeah, um, just how I am since I've been little, I kind of get off subject, so let's get more into the video. Gothic literature. 
just my favorite part and I could discuss gothic literature a lot. I really can. Um, as well as music because music is my passion and I love music. Um, so the next one, uh, oh yeah, before I get into it, um, Anne Radcliffe, more things about the um, author um, Horace Warpole. The aesthetics of the book, t uh, of the book, I can't even say words, why? Sorry. <sighs> the aesthetics of the book shaped modern day gothic books, films, um, art, music, and the goth sub nah, subculture. The book was published in 1764. Um, so yeah, there's, there's like a short on Horace Warpole. If you want to check out more about him, you can look him up. It's not that hard. And, um, and or, um, purchase his book because you can actually find the book. There's different, um, they have the books at Barnes and Noble. That's where I get a lot of my gothic literature as well as like thrift stores and used bookstores but they've had like cheaper um gothic literature there like as cheap as like five or six dollars they have different covers they have like five six dollar one ten dollar one twenty five dollar one twenty dollar one uh it's just different covers but it's the same story so you can get it way cheaper and um that story, unfortunately, I don't have. I have Dracula, uh, um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, but I have a lot of Edgar Allan Poe's uh, works. I have um, Grimm's Fairy Tales, which is um, in there as well. Uh, what else do I have? I have a lot, I can't remember, I have to literally go to my bookshelf to look, but I have a lot of uh, gothic literature or like horror related um, or something with like that kind of like um, aspect. Um, so yeah, on to Anne Radcliffe, which I don't really have much to say because like I said, I don't want, to, don't want the video to be too long. So Anne Radcliffe. So, Anne Radcliffe's gothic novel, Radcliffe's Technique, um, <clears throat> explains the apparently, explain the apparently supernatural elements, which I love supernatural elements, and, um, I like a lot of that, and I like a lot of horror. But yeah, supernatural elements um, in her novels has been credited with enabling gothic fiction to achieve, uh, respectively, in the 1790s. Um, so yeah, it's good to have like horror or like supernatural elements. Um, it's good to have romanticism in, in books as well. Sorry. Oh yeah, and I'm filming in the spare room. I don't know why I didn't say anything that I did. I am. Um, I had to take my uh, background down because my fiance's brother is going to be staying in this room tomorrow. So I had to take all that down. And then there's a bed in here now, which was originally out in my room. So, yeah. But I will be putting it back up because I do want to still film in here. And I'm filming on my phone which seems to have better quality. It's just uh, shaky whenever I move and it kind of shakes. And sorry for like the lack of makeup for, um, I wanted to take it off because it was starting to wear off. And the fact that for some reason lately, my eyes have been like watering, mostly on the left side for some reason. So when I apply my eyeliner, it's kind of makes it hard because I'm like, like this morning when I was at work, Without spraying it though, like, 
my eyes was watering like right here and I gently touched it and get it like um getting tears off my my eyes I don't know but anyway um yeah so that's Anne Radcliffe now we're going to talk about one of my other favorites Mary Shelley um best known for her gothic novel Frankenstein which a lot of people seem to confuse Frankenstein with the monster, but Frankenstein is the creator, Victor Frankenstein, who created the monster. Um, and it does have some romantic elements as well. The uh, book was published in 1818. Yeah, like I said, tells the story of a scientist. You can read the book, and if you don't like to read books, watch the movies. There's uh, different adaptations of the movies. My favorite being the um, adaptation of the 1931 um, Frankenstein with Boris Karloff. Excellent, excellent, really is. Um, it's kind of right up there with the 1931 Dracula with uh, <laughs> Bela Lugosi. And I've said this many times. I sound like a broken record uh, because I love that film. Um, now, I do kind of like the... Uh, 19, I think it was 1992, it was Gary Oldman, um, Dracula, um, because it was kind of close to that of, um, Vlad the Impaler, like, and then him becoming, like, Dracula, and, um, yeah, I'm also going to be mentioning Dracula in here, like, um, so I'll get to that part in a second, so yeah, um, and then Edgar Allan Poe, which is the next one, my favorite, um, as far as um, poets go, because I do like poetry. I used to actually write poetry back in uh, high school. Mm. I loved my poetry, but some of my poetry I looked back on kind of made me cringe, but, you know, you gotta think, like, when you're, like, in your teens, you're in your adolescence, you're young, um... No, I wouldn't say adolescence, but yeah. Um, I liked writing a lot of poetry, like dark or um, how I felt, pretty much. I wrote one called Darkness is All Around Me. I think that's in my room with all my drawings. I stashed that away somewhere. I haven't looked at it since then, but that was like one of the, one of the first ones I... Um, wrote and I think my teachers actually liked that poem for some reason I um I felt like darkness in me and I felt like I don't know writing it on on paper and I, I can't remember like everything that was in it I was watching scrubs out there very funny uh doctor show um so yeah I loved writing poetry and my favorite inspiration for writing poetry was Edgar Allan Poe but none of my work was as good as his so yeah Sir Edgar Allan Poe who is widely regarded as a ooh, um, central figure of romanticism because he does have have a lot of romanticism in his poetry um as far as like in the United States it's like a central figure of romanticism in the United States and American literature as a whole and of the country's earliest practitioners of short stories there's that and um I'm not gonna get into all his works and I sound like a broken record again, but this is my favorite poem by him, published in 1845, The Raven, which, like I said, is my favorite. And, um, cool, cool thing, um, with me, with my name being Raven, and since I started working at this one place, even though I've heard it quoted to me before, um, one of the people actually said, um, never more to me. As I was walking by, as they called my name, said Raven, and then I heard 
Nevermore. So I was like, I actually like that. I took that as like a, a good thing, like a good sign, or a, a good compliment. I really love that. Um, a lot of times people, you know, um, when my, when finding my name's Raven, they're like, oh, like the poem, the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. I'm like, yeah, like that. Or um, my favorite character in Teen Titans, not Teen Titan, not Teen Titans Go, but Teen Titans, um, Raven. And um, there's many other reasons why I like that name, but yeah, those are like two of the main reasons that I love my name Raven. Um, because of that poem my favorite poem I love it so much I want to actually get like a poster I think I've seen like on eBay you can get like a poster um with like the poem on it and it has I think it has it around so I can't remember I have to I have to look again but yeah if I could get a poster like that I would literally put that on my wall sorry I accidentally closed up my video now on to the last part of the video, my favorite part, um, not that I didn't like everything I was talking about, Dracula, um, written by Irish author Bram Stoker, uh, which surprisingly enough, I know that's who the author was, I didn't know he was Irish, which is awesome, um, well, I mean, I know he's Irish now, but before I didn't. But it's awesome because I also have Irish in my blood and my real last name, of course, is Leahy. It's not Dracul. Dracul. And of course, if you go back to my video, why I chose uh, Dracul, short for Dracula, that's why I kind of took the name from Dracula because my fascination for Dracula and um, that's why it's Dracul for short. And I have Raven. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Bram Stoker. Irish author. Best known for his gothic novel. Dracula. Uh, which is based off. Vlad the Impaler. Like I have pretty much touched up on. The movie adaptation. Kind of being close. To. Um, like at least the beginning part. You know. With Vlad the Impaler. <clears throat> which you can look up Vlad the Impaler. Um, I actually have a Dracula shirt, which has been in a lot of my videos, I'm pretty sure. On the back it has, like, people impaled and have, like, Vlad the Impaler. So, and I think I got that, like, four, five years downtown St. Augustine. I think I paid like $10, 10 or 20 I can't remember, but yeah, I've had it for years. And I love that shirt. Next shirt I want to get, though, has, will have to have Bela Lugosi's Dracula. That would be awesome. Um, so yeah, it's a gothic novel based off Vlad the Impaler um, about Dracula. Who's trying to uh, go from Transylvania to England to basically spread his undead curse to people. And it does have romantic elements in there as well, which it's, it's a great story. And then it's like a battle between him, um, Van Helsing, and his men, and a woman. Um, but Dracula has been assigned like to many types of like literary genres like uh including vampire literature horror um fiction and the novel has spawned numerous um theatrical like it's done like a lot of theater plays it's um films even television there's like a lot of good um dracula movies but I've already named, like, my favorite ones. Now, there is one that I actually liked, um, where they perceived Dracula in, like, kind of, like, a different light. 
And that's um, Dracula Untold. That one's actually pretty good. I actually like that one. Um, and then, of course, the books. And there's actually uh, books I have that's supposed to be, like, after Dracula's time. It's um, Bloodline and Bloodline Reckoning, I think. Which still has to do with, like, a Dracula in a way. Um, and I read those back in high school. I need to read those again because my memory is not always that great. I have terrible memory. Um, there's times where I have to be reminded of things or I have to write stuff down just to remember. That's how bad my memory can be. Um, I try not to, like, I can remember certain things, which I've been told by my parents it's selective memory. I remember what I want to remember, but that's not true. It's just my my brain is weird. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, so that's gothic literature. There's a lot of good works out there. Um, and I love listening to podcasts, um, talking about literature and, um, watching different, like, I would like to see more goth YouTubers actually talk about goth literature. That'd be interesting because I do watch, uh, Lygia Resurrected's videos. She does very good on talking about literature, even about authors that I've not heard of and they're pretty interesting so I really do need to check out the ones that she talks about because I find them all very fascinating. She does a very good job on her videos. Um, so yeah, you should check her uh, channel out as well if you are interested in that. She also does like other videos like absence reviews and just like uh, band reviews. Uh, music and other things as well so yeah I'll link her channel below she's very awesome and uh, I will see you guys next time in my next video I hope you guys did enjoy I hope it somewhat helped um, on what gothic literature is and me touching up on like some of the different authors so yeah bye dark moon